Hello, today we will discuss inversion. My, one of my viewers has commented about this I, and I want to create some videos about the inversion because this is a very big topic. It will be some videos about this one. In the first one, we will define it, it and some basic properties. The uh, inversion is the transformation of the plane. They are each point is mapped to the appropriate point P prime, which is on the same line as OP. O must be the center. To define the inversion, we need to take the center, center of the cycle and its radius. And property is that OP prime times OP must be equal R square. And how can we find P prime very easily? If we draw tangents from P to this square omega, then A and B, then we will see that if we take the intersection of A and B and OP, then this point will have the, these properties. At first notice that this must be 90 degrees. And if we take the same thing for B, then we will see that these, both of these OA and OB are radius so, and PB equals PA. So AP BO must be kite. So from here we will conclude that AB must be perpendicular to OP. And if we look at OAP right triangle, we are given altitude and we can use the property that OA square equals OP prime times OP. In this case, OA equals radius. So R square equals OP prime times OP. So P, P prime must be the point which we are looking for. And uh, we can see that for P prime, inversion point must be P. And now we can notice that if we make the inversion from the same point and same radius twice, we will get back to our initial configuration. So nothing will be changed because P will get back to point P and P prime will get back to point P prime. Now let's discuss the case when we are given a segment A prime and B prime. If we are given points inside the cycle, they will be mapped points outside the cycle because their distance from the O must be less than R and points outside the cycle must have distance greater than R. Similarly, we will see that A prime will be mapped to A and B prime will be mapped to B. Then we need to show that angle O A prime B prime must be equal angle O B A. To show this, we will need to use power of point O A prime times O A equals R square and this equals O B prime times O B. So and triangle O A prime B prime must be similar to triangle O B A. In this case, we will see that angle O A prime B prime must be called O B A and O B prime A prime must be called O A B. This is very useful property, and we will we will use it for the later configurations. Also, this can be very helpful if we if the in the statement are given some of the two angles which are not very good in the statement, but after making the version, they will be easily sum up and give us very good properties. Now let's discuss the another case. Where will be the line L mapped if it does not pass through the point O? Let's assume that it con uh, intersects the cycle. And if it does not intersect, the, uh, we will get the almost similar case. At first notice that A and B will remain to its place. So A prime must be equal to A and B prime must be equal to B. Now, if we choose any point C on the line and take the inter uh, C prime appropriate point, then we need to show that C prime must be on the cycle which pass through A, O and B. So if we manage to prove that angle O, o C prime A equals angle OBA, then we will finish the problem. At first notice that OC times OC prime equals 
always square. So this means that OA must be the tangent to the ACC prime triangle, circumcircle circum of ACC prime. So angle from here we will conclude that angle OAC must be equal angle OC prime A. Because OA equals OB, then we will get the same thing for OBA. And we will see that C prime must be on the on this cycle omega 2. Now notice that if we are take if we take the point at infinity, this point P will be mapped to O because its distance from O is infinity and distance from O to itself is zero. So to get the mirror product almost equal to R square, we need to take this mapped to O. And we will see that points outside the cycle will be mapped to the inside arc arcs like this one. We take point D. Here D prime will be inside the cycle. And if the point was inside the cycle, it will be mapped outside the cycle, as it was the case for C and C prime. And now look at there will be omega 2 mapped after the inertion. As I have already mentioned that if we make inertion twice from the same point and same radius, everything will be same, remain same as the initial configuration. And now we will use this fact to show that this omega 2 cycle will pass through, uh, pass in, convert into the L line, because if we make inversion, C prime will go to C and all points D prime will go to D and all points will behave the same way. So this omega 2 will convert to a line. And what can we say about the line which pass through the O? We see this is a very easy way. If we choose any point P, it will be mapped to on the same line P prime. So line which pass through the O will remain same and every line which doesn't pass through the O, this will convert into the cycle which always pass through the O. So this was all I wanted to discuss for today. Let's wait for the second window about the inversion.